Welcome to Diets Debunked here at the Hippocrates Health Institute campus in West Palm Beach, Florida, where we go and look at some of the most trendy diets, some of the most trendy diet products, and we just see if they are true or not. And we are here with the world leading expert in nutrition, Brian Clement, PhD, LN. Welcome, Brian. So nice to be here with the debunking. Yep. So we are here to either give this diet the gavel at the end or to let it pass. So we are going to be talking about the ever famous and trendy ketogenic diet today. Uh, Brian, what, what do you know about this diet so far? Well, I know an awful lot about it. Uh, the origins come back uh, to the 1920s and it's just been revived and we had the leaders of it, the founders of the modern ketogenic diet here at a science conference a number of years ago. So I got very much in detail, and they were very kind and good people. Sadly, people that have commercialized it now are doing it for a totally different reason. Interesting. So for those of you who have not heard of the ketogenic diet before, it is a diet in which is very low carb, it is high fat, and it says it has many other health benefits. Um, some of those may include uh, benefits fighting diabetes, cancer, epilepsy, or even Alzheimer's. So the first thing that we want to look at today is what are some of the staples or recommended products that you should consume when taking in the ketogenic diet? So Brian, I'm going to give you a little bit of an overview here. For a one week meal plan, um, this is a typical, what they call a typical Monday. So for Monday, they're saying start your day with breakfast with bacon, <laughs> eggs, and tomatoes. Oh. So let's just start there. Bacon, <laughs> eggs, and tomatoes. What is or is not right about this? Well, even the World Health Organization had to step in a few years ago and say that two pieces of bacon a week, a week, is going to dramatically raise your chances of colon cancer. Why? Because governments around the world in Europe and North America didn't have the guts to tell you that. So what do I think of bacon? I don't care what diet it's on. It's outrageous. No! Okay, so bacon and eggs. I mean, this is a staple not just for people on the ketogenic diet, but this is a staple for people in multiple different kinds of diets. So the eggs in there too. I mean, eggs are kind of considered healthy by most people. Well, by most people who don't know very much, who went along with the program, who believe the egg industry. Well, when I was 120 pounds larger than I am now, I ate a lot of eggs. One egg has 230 grams of cholesterol. What? How much cholesterol do you want? None. And who eats one egg? I mean, Nobody. this is outrageous. Is this a diet to death? This should be called the death diet. All right. So well, let's that thing too. I mean, knock it out. All right. So um, let's let's move on to lunch. Okay. So we lunch. Have, yes. You're probably dead by lunch. What are you talking about? All right. So we're gonna have next, um, and I say we metaphorically, of course. Not you. I mean. Not not I us. I didn't even sit next to you. <laughs> so the people of the world out there consuming the ketogenic diet, they might have chicken salad, olive oil, and feta cheese for their lunch. So chicken salad, olive oil, and feta cheese. I mean, to me, I'm no diet expert, but that seems like a lot of oil and a lot of fat. I know that's their thing, well, but. This is, I'm so anxious and annoyed. We've got to immediately stop this before we have catastrophic <laughs> pandemics of the keto pandemic. This is outrageous. I mean, you're telling me chicken salad. Well, one of the many books I've written is Poison Poultry. Mm -hmm. Maybe just from that title, you know what I think of poultry. Matter of fact, just two years ago, there was evidential science shown on cancer, and they took the DNA out of the chicken, compared it to the cancer tumor, and guess what? It came directly from there. This mm -hmm. is supposed to be a healthy diet. <laughs> this is a diet of disaster. Get out of here. This is insane. <laughs> All right, so we, we'll give some benefit. Um, so well, wait a minute, we have to give it a plug. They did say a love. I'm not mm -hmm. sure about a lot of olive, but a love, that's the only good thing we've heard so far today. Okay, all right, fair enough. Uh, so for the people out there who will always say, and this is one of our favorites, we talked about it before, 
What about just a little bit of fish? Oh! Just a little bit of fish. So uh, the recommended dinner that they're saying here is salmon with asparagus, of course, cooked in butter. Oh my God! Well, one of the other books I've written is a book exposing the entire fish myth. This is an outrageous myth. This is called Killer Fish. Read the book. Read mm. the science. Now, most of you have this romantic idea of Eskimos out in the middle of a river with a salmon jumping and they catch it with their bare hands and they put it on ice and they ship it to your local fine fish restaurant. Now, what we know about every fish on the planet Earth, it's filled with deadly chemicals, plastics, pharmaceutical drugs, period. And you say wild salmon? Well, most of the wild salmon you have, because there's no laws anywhere on the planet that govern this, is not wild. It's in factory farms, mostly from wonderful countries like China <laughs> that have no regulations. What do I think about this? <laughs> Insane. <laughs> All right. So let's, let's just hit a few more things because there's a few areas we haven't quite talked about here in terms of the daily diet. So uh, some people on the ketogenic diet, they may say for dinner, we're just going to hit dinner right now, uh, meatballs, cheddar cheese, and wait, hold on. They actually did say vegetables in this one, which well, is surprising. Well, thank God. So we have two things, olives and vegetables so yep, far. Yep, yep. So, but the meatballs and the cheddar cheese, I thought that was an interesting combination of um, products. Well, it is. I mean, meatballs, uh, my wife is Swedish, mm -hmm. and she hasn't eaten a meatball for almost 50 years. She calls me a meatball sometimes, but that has nothing to do with it. <laughs> the fact of the matter is, meatball comes from the anal portion of a steer, mm. and you call it steak. Uh, it's just really the muscle of an animal. And what we know is that it's coming from even something most of you on the ketogenic know is bad, called red meat. Mm -hmm. We don't want red meat. We don't want any meat. We don't want you to kill yourself. So now on top of that, they put cheese. Now what we know from brilliant work and the work we've done here for nearly 65 years is that, by the way, if you want to kill yourself with cancer, eat dairy food. So now you're having disease-causing, heart disease-causing, diabetic-causing, cancer-causing meat, and on top of it, you put a supercharge of cancer-causing cheese. Out the window this goes. This is crazy. This is supposed to be healthy, people. You have to be out of your mind to think this is healthy. Well, that's a great transition because Next, what we're going to look at is one of the reasons that people think that they should go on the ketogenic diet or decide to make that decision is because they believe it'll help them lose weight. You know, that's what fuels so many of the diets in 2020, in the future, I'm sure, is how can they lose weight, right? So the ketogenic diet has for a long time been known to help people lose weight very quickly. So this is what they say are some of the benefits of doing the ketogenic way. Now, one thing that they say here is that... Um, the diet it can be so filling that you can lose weight without counting calories or without tracking your food intake. Now, I think a lot of people find that desirable because they say, oh, I don't have to think about my food as much if I eat these certain kinds of foods. What do you think about that? Well, let's go slow and clear on this one. Number one, what they're telling you to get rid of cooked carbohydrates, I would agree with that. Mm -hmm. So cooked carbohydrates, even plant-based cooked carbohydrates, break down to sugars, and they put weight on your body. But you don't replace that with a disease-causing menu of flesh of animals and milk from the bosoms of animals. You just don't do that. We have overwhelming evidence over a century to show you that animal-based fare literally kills you, clogs the veins, mutates the cell, takes the colon and fills it up with disease-causing uh, properties and components. We just can't possibly think that this is good. The next thing is we've reduced our awareness about food. When we talk about the ketogenic diet or many of the other popular ones on the market, it's all about weight loss. When do we ever get about health, mm -hmm. longevity, healing, vitality, vigor, and all of the ones that do give you the vigor and the vitality and the energy? Guess what? They make you live longer and you get thin. Nobody on the Hippocrates diet is heavy, unless you're not on the Hippocrates diet and lying and saying you are. 
This is the diet that the human body was meant to consume, a plant-based organic diet, not flesh from an animal, ketogenic, whatever it's called, the latest, most popular, insane, crazy thing that I've heard, out the window, this shit. <laughs> Um, all right, so I mean, that, I think you covered that one pretty well, but you know, they also say that the ketogenic diet has these properties that can help with, wait for it, diabetes and pre-diabetes. <laughs> now, I, I already know a, a bit of what you're thinking here, but let's let the people here uh, hear this from themselves. So what people say um, about the ketogenic diet is that um, a study has been done in which people with type 2 diabetes found that seven to the 21 participants were able to um, stop using their diabetes medications because um, of what happened when they started going on the ketogenic diet. Now, you know, someone may look at this and say, I have to go on it right away. So what would you say about that? Well, what I would say, I'm currently in the middle of writing a book, an e-book, that probably within this month, you're going to be able to download for free on diabetes. One section I wrote in the book is on fats. Now, the number one cause for type 2 diabetes is animal fat. Everything you've mentioned except two or three items is animal fat. For them to say, they must have made this up, that they put people on this animal fat and they, by the way, reduced and came off insulin is complete bizarre nonsense. It's not even biologically possible or scientifically uh, able to do anything like that. That is outrageous crazy. This is going to be dangerous. It's going to hurt people. Now, what we know is if you get people off animal fat and you get people off all forms of sugar, including plant-based sugar, from high amounts of fruit, high amounts of carrot juice, beaches. I have never worked with a type 2 diabetic, never in 50 years, that doesn't recover if they do what we say. Mm. That's crazy. <laughs> Very good. Uh, so here are just a few other health benefits that are touted from the ketogenic diet. So uh, this one made me laugh off the bat because it, it was about heart disease. <laughs> and uh, it says that it can, the ketogenic diet can um, improve risk factors like body fat. They keep bringing it back to body fat here. Um, and cholesterol levels um, would, that will affect blood sugar and blood pressure um, by basically just limiting you know, the excess fat on the body. So, but they're saying this can actually be beneficial for those um, who are concerned about heart disease. Well, there's two kinds of fat. The one you were born with as a healthy infant was actually called brown fat. That's the fat you want. All other fat, be it you're overweight, as I used to be, when I ate these animal-based diets, I guess not to be helpful and do the opposite of what they're suggesting. If you want a heart attack, if you want a stroke, Look at the work of Dr. Esselstyn out of mm. Cleveland Clinic. Yep. Not listen to somebody who's selling you a diet that's going to kill you. Mm -hmm. Out the window it goes. <laughs> and so let's just hit one more here on the health um, assumed benefits of the ketogenic diet. Uh, and this one's a little bit less serious. So they say, you know, people who struggle with acne, right, just a skin kind of condition here, um, that by lowering insulin levels and eating less sugar or less processed foods, it may help improve acne. Well, in my book, Dairy Deception, I actually point out that dairy food is the number one cause of acne. And this is a big dairy diet, I can tell you that. They're pouring butter on top of animal flesh. And remember this, that's the number one cause. Dairy is sugar. Hmm. Remember, it has something in it that you don't want to hear. It's called sugar. And so the reality, quite simple, is this is not even possibly true, not even slightly true. Whoever put this together should actually be pulled into a courtroom and challenged because if people follow this, they're going to have diabetes, they're going to have cancer, they're going to have heart disease, and a f slew of other things. They're going to get overweight. They're going to die sooner than they should. They're going to age sooner than they should. There's no question about this. This is crazy. <laughs> Well, I think, I think we've pretty much debunked this diet for the most part, Brian. Um, but Don't even call it a diet. <laughs> call it a death trap. <laughs> the, the, the death trap here. I mean, I, I, I agree with you. So for the people out there who are wondering, you know, a lot of people, like we said, come on this for the fact that, you know, they can lose weight, right? So if you were to give someone three tips that they can apply to their diet today to help them lose weight, what would you say? The number one thing that I had to do, that everyone has to do, is get an image of who you want to be. And even if you have to put pictures of who that is, 
You've got to start aspiring to that image. Number two, you've got to eliminate practically the entire ketogenic diet because this is certainly going to give you weight and disease. There's no question about that. I could sit here with 500, 600, 1,000, give me a chance, 2,000, 5,000 doctors and researchers that will concur with me. I don't know how they get away with this nonsense. So none of this. Number three, eat organic plant-based foods and as much as you can raw. And we're not talking about lots of fruit that will put weight on your body. We're talking about greens. We're talking about vegetables that don't have high uh, glucose potential in it. That's what I know works because in a clinical setting here in my life for 50 years, I've watched thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of people lose weight. You want to lose weight, that's how you do it. You don't go on these mythology trips into death and dying. <laughs> That's perfect. Well, thank you so much, Brian, for um, being on this episode. We're going to have more coming your way soon. We can't wait to uh, go into some other diets with you and find the truth behind them and help everyone here on the planet have a healthier and happier life. So till next time, we will see you here at Hippocrates TV. Be well. <laughs>